Creepy pastas are undeniably the internet's favourite form of horror content. Jeff the Killer, Slenderman, Hero Brian, and Sonic.exe are extremely popular in certain corners of the internet. And if you're like me, you probably only know these characters through cultural osmosis because it is absolutely impossible to escape them on the internet. However, in my opinion, these stories have no depth. They are just designed to spook and scare with no real substance. Most creepypastas were written on 4chan probably by a child, and over time they drifted into being a form of kids first horror alongside indie horror games that are popular on YouTube. So naturally, Deltrune got one, and you should be surprised. It's the universal law at this point that the internet has to make everything edgy and violent. Underfell exists after all. But the Deltrune fan does attempt the formula, does something very different. It uses its characters appropriately. It works with the game's existing framework, as well as the tropes of creepypastas. And more importantly, it knows it's edgy and logical, and it runs with it anyway. This is... The Salt Root. Okay, that intro is way too grandiose and pretentious. But I still like this fan work, despite not liking creepypastas. And I want to talk about something I like and dissect it under the microscope for a little bit. I find the salt route an interesting example, both of how horror content works in fandoms, and how fandom culture can take ownership of fan works. So let's go back to mid-October 2021. It's only a couple of weeks after the release of Deltrune Chapter 2. The Snowgrave route an intentional dark route in Deltrune, that is intentionally framed as a creepypasta style exploit, is fresh on everyone's mind. And a Tumblr user, known as Be A Big Shot at the time, is making fandom posts. Here is a newly born Spamton stan who immediately branded themselves around their latest character obsession. But then they had a dream, and they posted about that dream on their blog the next day, and it immediately blows up. Anyone want to hear about the dream I had, where Toby Fox added in a route where you could put Spamton on your team, but only through extremely specific circumstances. So the way you recruit Spamton is you'd have to randomly stumble about these five loose white pixels scattered around the city, called salt stains. And then when you go to fight Spamton for the first time, he starts midway through his battle, and looks really dejected and troubled, and goes, My keys. I left them. And then you're given an option to help him find his keys, which is how you could get him on your team, and you have to carry him around for the rest of the game. No of party members would join you, it's just you and Spamton, and you're made to use Spamton to kill a bunch of stuff around you, and you can't spare anything. Towards the end, Spamton's faith in you starts to wane, and he starts catching on to how you're not actually going to help him find his keys, you're just using him, but you have to convince him that you're on his side. If you manage to convince Spamton, you eventually get to the Queen fight, where no dialogue is exchanged and barely isn't even mentioned once. She disappears after the fight, and you sit with him, in the middle of the carpet once it's done. You're put in a dialogue loop where it's just him going, I made you proud, didn't I? If you say yes, it will just loop. And if you pick no, Spamton limps off screen like, well, can't please everyone, I guess, and can't be encountered again. This post spread like crazy along the fandom, fueled by concepts like the sprites for Spamton as a party member, or the creator's own extra edition, a tragic encounter with Addison. So at this point, we should probably ask, why was the salt route so popular? Well, in my opinion, one of the key factors is instead of an entirely unique horror setting that exists outside of a canon, the salt route was able to construct its own story inside of the game's framework, set as an alternate route, just like the Snowgrave route was in the actual game. Let's use Sonic.exe as an example. That story used the framing device of a cursed version of the game. Nobody's expecting the jump scares for the demonic entity to actually be consistent with Sonic as a character, because the EXE isn't Sonic. The Undertale community is used to this. Underfell Sans is an AU character and is quite removed from the character of Sans from the actual game. But with the Salt Route, the Creep Pass element comes from its setting as an actual route hidden in the game, just like what the Snowgrave route was. The Salt Route is a variation on the themes of freedom and controlling characters that are explored in the Snowgrave route. And because of its setting, you're expected to identify this Spamton as the Spamton from the game, not as a spin-off character. 
This also plays into Salt Root's other strength, how it's able to twist the pre-existing story into horror elements. Spamtu's tragic backstory is a core part of his character. Behind his villainy is vulnerability. Behind his capitalistic greed is a want to prove himself after everyone he used to know has left him. In the real game, that's his backstory and his motive. He projects this onto Chris constantly. But in the salt route, how Spamton is broken, those vulnerabilities are brought to the surface, and it allows for a more direct exploration of those themes. It's also just popular because it's creepypasta, and some people like that regardless of quality. I'm not saying this is the greatest story ever told, far from it. I just think what it puts on the table with Spamton's characterisation is interesting. So anyway, because of these factors, the AU spread, and across 2021, different contributors made their own versions of the Salt Room, adding new ideas like original music, like the soundtrack by Nominal Dingus, which I'll be using in this video so far. Content to Queen's Mansion, since that wasn't mentioned in the original post. One of the more notable additions to the Salt Room was this comic by Hibibs on Tumblr. This comic has Chris physically fighting against the soul across the route, including an attempt to rip the soul out at a save point adding to the feeling of something going wrong. I want to emphasize that this thing wasn't obscure. Plenty of Salt Root videos have over 100k views on YouTube. However, this wasn't one single AU under one umbrella. They all have a Tumblr post as a base, but they took the concept in different directions. That was until we got an animation that turned all these disconnected ideas into one AU. Deltrune Salt Root, the full concept, is a video by JQR, and this is basically the Salt Root's final form. This thing is long, and it adapts almost every fan work. No stone was left unturned. When comparing this animation to the original Tumblr post, it has some key differences. The main one is that Chris only starts physically dragging Spamton through the route once they get to Queen's Mansion. Before that point, Spamton is willingly helping us, and the corruption is a slow burn. We also get a Spamton shop segment. The salt makes a comeback as it blocks the way to Neo. As Spamton's motives are clarified, because apparently the keys are for his Kungadero and are needed to achieve his freedom. Also, if they have the lack of a spare key for no reason, Spamton literally takes our spare key as a really clever pun that also implies that key is a stand-in for freedom. I want to emphasise what a huge achievement this animation is. Because it was done solo by one person, it is an insane amount of effort. But I also have some criticisms because it does some stuff that I really, really don't like. Stuff that I think actually goes against the vibe the original post went for. Because a lot of the implied creepy and mysterious stuff is just replaced with full-on violence. I'm aware that it's weird of me to criticise not only the biggest Salt Root related piece of media, but also the video that 90% of my footage comes from. But I honestly think this video goes too far. Queen disappearing becomes a brutal death and convincing Spamton to go with you becomes Spamton get physically beaten by Chris, and that's just way too far. Stuff like the murder of the Ayerson in the original Salt Root concept is not only a scary jump scare, but it also serves a plot for the supposed route, since it's a darker parallel to Birdley's death. But in the Salt Root animation, violence and jump scares just added for no real reason. So overall, I think the Salt Root animation goes a bit too far in certain places, and whilst content-wise it's the definitive version of the route, I don't think it's the best version story-wise. But unfortunately, the AU died after this video, and I kind of think the video is to blame, because this is the definitive edition of the Salt Route. It is hard to add new scenarios into the AU, when this entire segment of the game has been created from start to finish. Before this animation, you could bend the story enough to add anything you wanted, as long as it was vaguely Deltrune and or Creepypasta related. But now, the Salt Route has a set canon. Don't get me wrong, JQR's animation is phenomenal, but it mostly killed the source material that it adapted so well. Odds are, if you're watching this video, you've probably seen that animation, and then I'm the first person to mention the Salt Route to you in like over a year. But I think it would be cool if my video could help give this AU another kickstart and allow for more fan art and videos to be made about it, because it is sad to see stories slowly die out. So if making this video makes people talk about this thing again, that would be cool. Thank you so much for watching.